Hello friends, I am so excited to teach you how to paint this painting. This is with acrylic paint and we're doing a monochromatic picture. Monochromatic means that it's one color. So we're going to be using my very favorite color, red iron oxide. And there's three places that I know you can buy this color. You could use burnt sienna, but I just love this color. It's transparent and you can get it from Nova Color, um, Golden High Flow Acrylics, uh, Red Iron Oxide, or uh, one other one, let's see, um, Windsor Newton Red Iron Oxide Acrylic Paint. And I just love this color, it's just magical. So um, I do use this color almost for all of my underpaintings, it's just so fun. And um, so, what we're going to need for this painting, you absolutely have to have a spray bottle. You need an easel or something to prop your picture against because having this painting be vertical is super important because the paint is going to drip like crazy. And then you'll need a t-shirt rag so that you could do the rub out technique that I'm going to teach you. These four brushes, um, these are two fan brushes that are hog hair. I like hog hair because it's textured. It's not just smooth and anyway. And then these two brushes, just like a little detail brush and a, just a size eight brush. And you need a water vessel and um, you can varnish it at the end. This is a archival UV varnish, semi-gloss. You can use gloss, whatever you want. And then I just put my paint in a little cup like this and I just keep dipping it. And then you could um, also have some white and we'll teach you how to mix my favorite color of black at the end. Or you can just use normal black paint. So those are the supplies that you'll need. And now you'll get to watch the time lapse and I will teach you how to paint this painting which is called, um, the painting is called How Oft Would I Have Gathered You? It's from that scripture where, you know, Jesus is like in Jerusalem and, and you know, the people are being wicked and rebelling and he's like, how often would I have gathered you like a chicken gathers her chicks under her wings. And so I wrote a little story called Three Little Chickies that um, kind of illustrates that in a fun way that we'll post next week. So I hope you enjoy learning how to do an acrylic wash rub out monochromatic painting. The first step that you need to do is to gather supplies, which we just talked about. But um, if you want the full list of the 10 items that are good to have, it's in the show notes. And so um, step two is transfer the drawing onto the canvas. And in the show notes, it gives you four different ways to do that. So read that because um, I would like to encourage you to freehand it. Um, but go to my website, createwithcrystal.net, and you can get the image um, and print it out. It's called How Oft Would I Have Gathered You? And then step three is you wet the canvas with a spray bottle. And then step four, you take your fan brush and your red iron oxide, and you saturate the picture at the top and you let it drip down and spray it more and then you start letting um, coloring the top of the feathers and the bottom of feathers around the cute little chick and keep spraying it nothing is precious we want to get rid of the whites um, but we also want to save the whites i know that doesn't make sense but we're what we're doing is a gradient so the top of the painting goes dark to medium then the top of the chicken goes dark medium and the bottom of the chicken's dark again and the ground is light so we're just trying to establish values and values is the amount of dark to light and so this is a painting that you kind of need to go kind of a little bit faster than slower um, because you'll want to while it's wet do some of your rub out um, we're not doing the rub out yet we're just getting everything covered in colors. And then we're coloring in the dark parts of the feathers. And so then um, step five is 
you want to have soft edges. You don't want to outline like a coloring book. You want to have lost and found. So like kind of like think of it as I'm coloring like it's a dot to dot. So the eye will make it so it looks like a line, but I'm not going to outline it. I'm going to do here's a dark feather and then there's another dark feather and you don't want every feather to be the same shape. You want to have some big ones, some little ones and big, medium and small because that's interesting. Variety is interesting. And so um, the I will make it work um, stipple around the chick for fuzzy softness. And so stipple means that you take your fan brush, you might want to dry it off a little bit on a paper towel, and then you kind of stamp around your little chicky, and hopefully it's still wet. And so having it nice and wet will make it so it will just be soft. And right here I'm doing the rub out technique. So you're going to get a, um, a t-shirt rag and you're going to just wipe out some of the spots here. I'm wiping it out with a paintbrush and in between every time I'm, I get my brush cleaned off with water and then I take off a little bit of paint and then clean it off with water, wipe it off on the rag, pull off some paint. And then you can do that with the rag. Just use a dry spot on the rag, then move your finger a little, take off another, dry spot to rub out and um, the rub out creates this really beautiful glowy look and then right here you want to your most of your strokes are going to be vertical up and down or you want to go the same direction as the feathers so see the feathers up in the top right hand corner they kind of are diagonal because those feathers are in a diagonal but a lot of the others notice they're very vertical so Use the detail brush around the chick and do strokes that flare out. So you kind of start at the chick's head and then you go flare out, flare out, flare out. And it might look a little crazy right now, but we, it will, it will work. Trust me. Um, then, so step six is the rub out. So it's easiest to do while the painting is wet, like I said, but it is possible to do it when it's dry. When it's wet, just use the t-shirt rag and wipe out your dots or use your paintbrush, a clean paintbrush and wipe out areas that should be white. Um, when it's dry, you need to wet the area with a water wetted paintbrush. And then you take your t-shirt rag and you rub out that dot until it becomes whiter. So, um, so step seven is to get your values right. Values is the amount of dark to light. And this picture, we don't have any other colors except for white and black. It's a monochromatic painting. So what you're going to do is don't worry about the feathers looking like feathers. Just make it a gradient. Get your shadows right. So the shadows at the bottom of the chicken are darker. And that way the dark areas will hold together. And um, so over on the left, do you see how I've got lots of darkness on these feathers? So that's holding together as the dark part because we've got all these <laughs> feathers that are in kind of shadow. So, um, so we don't want the chicken to look like a polka dot chicken. We want the areas in shadow to hold together and not just look like, oh, these feathers are black and white. We want the feathers to all look like, oh, here's where the darker feathers are. And here in the middle area is where the light is shining more and it makes it look round, a round, fluffy, soft, chubby mother hen. Isn't that great? <laughs> okay. So, um, step eight is to blow dry the painting, uh, until it's dry to the touch. And then step nine, um, is 
it's optional. You do not have to do this, but I just felt like the painting needed it to give it a little kick was um, to add some white and black paint and you know to do a true rub out just like a true watercolor painting you let the white of the canvas or the watercolor paper shine through and to use white is kind of like breaking the rules but who makes up these rules anyway you know so I put I didn't feel like my rub out was as glowy and magical around the mother hen as I wanted so I added some white dots and um, and I, I just would kind of what you do is you kind of are creating a, like a three tiered target so it's like you've got three circles and that inside circle is the most white and then it's a little bit medium white and then the last circle is more faded out and so you can rub it with your finger to kind of soften it because you don't want it to look like, oh, my chicken with polka dots all over. You want it to look like, oh, my chicken with a glowy, beautiful, soft, white, you know, gradation around her. So see right here what I'm doing. I'm making the circles, but I'm trying to soften them with my finger so they're not just too strong. I'm kind of giving a little bit. I, I did the highlight on the eyes. You want to do the highlight the same on the little chicky on both eyes. And then I did some little little white feathers around the little chicky. If something looks bad or out of place, add more. So right now it's looking like, what's she doing with all this white? But by the end, it will look okay because I did it in more places. See how we added it to the feathers and it looks like, oh, that's meant to be. Okay, that works. So, um, let's see. So, I added black um, on the bottom of the chick, the, the hen, um, so that it was just more, there was more shadow, more pop. And my favorite way to make black um, the impressionist said don't use black but if you do use black don't use black from the store mix your own and my favorite black of all time is alizarin crimson and phthalo green mixed together it makes the most juicy rich black it's amazing but another one that was awesome is the red iron oxide or some burnt sienna with ultramarine blue which is a rich delicious black so that will also work great so um the impressionist says don't use black because it's the color of death um and it just sometimes it really can make things look dead in your painting um but anyway it see how this is just kind of making it kind of pop and just making it more more rounded like oh shadow you've got a little bit of shadow and isn't it amazing how you can just do a few feathers that are kind of these little u-shaped feathers and it looks so much like a feathery fluffy chicken i love it so uh step number 10 this is the last step this is where you sign it and varnish the painting um, i use a uh, krylon high gloss or semi gloss varnish with it's a UV coat and it's just great and it really makes it sparkle and just oh it's beautiful so I hope that you have fun painting this painting and if you don't feel like you can be wild and crazy the first time and just go for this do it twice I mean writers rewrite artists repaint redraw like when i do commissions i paint the painting twice so that i don't feel stressed and i can just be wild and crazy so i hope you like subscribe to create with crystal and comment any questions and i'll try to answer your questions and i hope you have a blast painting and next week i'll be posting the story behind this painting called three little chickies and it is adorable. You are going to love it.